Gunter, he's a three-year-old giant schnauzer. And um, we're just kind of evaluating him a little bit today. And uh, this dog has the potential to be a protection dog, a Schutzen dog, or a ring dog. And um, I'm not sure which path he's going to take. But uh, this dog displays a lot of the right drives. That's the, that's the Good boy. Sit. Sit. Just hold this collar. What you got, buddy? What you got, buddy? What you got, buddy? Ready? Can you tell us how you became involved with the giant schnauzer? My husband and I have had giants for 19 years. We started with a basic family pet and decided that we wanted to get more involved in training and showing. We've done very limited breeding, but we use only European bloodlines. And uh, most of the dogs right now have some connection to the East German bloodlines that have become available. Uh, we've used police and Schutzen bloodlines. That's about all his attention uh, our own interest is primarily in the obedience and the tracking, although we do some uh, confirmation showing, um, primarily because we feel a giant schnauzer should look according to the standard, but the most important thing is what the temperament and the intelligence are like, because you have to live with that every day. So we want a really sound individual. What we mostly know about the giant schnauzer is that it comes from the hills of Bavaria. The standard schnauzer was the original breed. It dates all the way back to around 1492. But the farmers wanted a larger breed to work cattle, so they crossed the standard schnauzer with a variety of farm and herding dogs that would do the kind of work that they wanted done. Most probably the Bouvier de Flanders and what was then known as the German Mastiff, which was the original black Great Dane which gave the giant schnauzer the black color. Uh, around 1920, 23, they were first imported to the United States. Uh, very few dogs came over. 10 to 12 were imported by two or three large kennels, and they came with, complete with handlers to take care of the dogs. Um, and they were all sorts of colors. There was no predominant color. It wasn't until around 1950 that the black color was consistent and a, rarely a salt and pepper. Uh, originally, they were black, brown, gray, blue, fawn, black and tan, black with white markings. But now any other color than black or salt and pepper is not allowed and should not be bred. Push. Okay, good boy. The basic use, of course, of the giant was as a herding dog, but by the time the railroads took over around 1900, they became guards for the stockyards and the butchers and the breweries, and then, of course, they were used as police and army dogs. Uh, especially through both world wars. And in fact, in 1923, uh, a dog, no, I think 19, in 1935, a dog named Peter won all four gold medals in the Canine Olympics. Um, right now in the United States, there are only about 1,200 registrations a year. They're not a very well-known breed here. Uh, although there are some police departments across the country that are using them, they're just not as common as they are in Europe. They're primarily a police dog and a family pet.
The giant is a very smart breed. They want to please you, so they learn very quickly. They do best if you use positive, motivational type techniques. They can be a little bit stubborn because they can get a little bit bored. So you have to stay ahead of them in your training and keep teaching them new things. But they can learn anything that, that you know how to teach them to do. They're doing very well in, in police work. They're used in search and rescue. Uh, there are a number of police departments around the United States that have found them very positive. They're getting more and more popular in the Schutzen sport. There are a few people who are doing the French ring sport with them. And the agility and the strength come through very well in those sports because they're a very athletic and energetic breed. Both males and females can be very territorial. They're very protective of their family. They're very loyal. They can be a little aloof with strangers. And because of their size and their strength and the strong prey drive that they have, uh, you have to keep an eye on them, especially where children are playing. A correct coat is a wiry terrier type coat with a soft woolly undercoat. It needs to be hand stripped to keep it in best condition. It may have a slight wave or a little bit of curl to it. It does not have to lay flat against the body like a, say a black lab or something like that but it is an all-weather, very easy to maintain coat. There's not usually a lot of leg hair. They are often very wiry as well. And for ease of maintenance, police departments and guard dog services usually just shave the dog down so that they don't have to even bother with the hand stripping and deal with any of the, the shedding problems. Uh, naturally, the giant must have profuse beard and eyebrows, which is the hallmark of the breed, and where the word schnauzer came from, which is the German word for muzzle, or snout, and refers basically to the whiskers. Hold on. Mike, how long, how long have you been working with this dog? Just about a week. Really just shows a lot of good, good instinct, though. Comes out hard defensively. Then when you run, he's, you know, he's... he's What's this dog's particular background, do you know? Um, his mother is a West German import, and his father was an East German import. Um, heavy Schutzen background, all Schutzen titles all the way back. And I, the father eventually became a police dog in... Uh, New Jersey, and uh, <laughs> he's just a well-bred dog. Now, <laughs> that just goes to show you, you know, the sport breeding, like ring sport or Schutzen breeding, can produce good dogs that have potential to become good protection dogs or police dogs with the right training. Luckily, the giant doesn't have very many health problems. They've never been a popular breed, so they've never um, been overbred by people who are not careful about their breeding. The number one problem, of course, is hip dysplasia, which many of the large breeds have a problem with. So that's something that you have to check into when you look at pedigrees and the parents of a particular puppy. When we consider a dog for breeding, we look at the pedigrees, the parents, and the working titles, the temperament and the character of the parents, as well as at the confirmation. Because even though a dog should be good to look at, you have to live with the intelligence and the temperament every day. So we look at the temperament test scores, the obedience titles the dogs may have. We do a, a extensive temperament testing of all the adults and all the puppies. Uh, we place the puppies based on their needs and what the prospective owner is looking for. Uh, a new owner needs to be aware of the intelligence and the strength of a breed this size and be able to make that kind of commitment in order to raise and train it properly 
and realize that they you know, are going to have a dog for 10 to 12 years or more, so they have to be prepared to make that lifetime commitment to their puppy. The giant is an excellent family protector because they're very loyal and they're very territorial. They will protect your house or your car. Uh, in most cases, they don't need attack training because they are forceful enough with their barking and their own natural suspicion that there aren't too many people who are going to argue with one when they see you have one on your property. But they're doing very, very well in the sport of Schutzen. A number of dogs are placing very high in national trials. Uh, the police departments are starting to use them more. In fact, one giant schnauzer uh, was shot in the line of duty and still caught the guy. And as soon as he recuperated, he went back to work. Uh, several of them have been used in earthquake searches for search and rescue. one Sunday morning they heard noises in the woods next to the house and came across three fellows who were stripping a car and they ran off into the bushes while my husband went home to call the police and the, the fellows wouldn't come out of the bushes so he asked the officers if he should send the dog and that's all they had to hear they came out with their hands up and this dog wasn't even protection trained but just by barking and looking intent, the fellows figured it was a safe bet to give up. No. And, he, he went, and he got a citizen citation from the town for that. Huh? <laughs> 